This video is going to be a continuation of our image attached to to-do items. Um, let me go back here. This is where we left off last time. We cleaned up our list. We rounded our image edges. We fixed an API. Did a bunch of little things uh, to kind of get this ready for the next step, which is we're going to add the image to the detail screen for the to-do. And I haven't really stepped through this one on my own yet, so we're going to live through this one together. I think the first thing we're probably going to do is we'll add the image component to the screen. So I will go to the to-do detail screen. Here we go. And it might be, yeah, we'll keep this simple. That's what I'm learning slowly, very slowly, is try to keep it simple. I'm going to add the image to the top. And what we're going to need to do is um, we're going to need to have access to the URL. And if we go look at our data for to do, we use the get record, pass in the to do ID when the screen comes in. And um, as you saw in our last video, we have the URL placeholder to allow that to happen. I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're getting. It's nothing too magical, but uh, we're missing the image pieces. Let me see if I have. Nice. Got my authorization token. And I think we messed with number 10 before. So let's just go ahead, run a test to get a to do. And we just get the basics out of the to do. So what I want to do is head back over here, and we're going to go to the to-do section, to the get. Um, we're getting the ID in like we're used to, getting all the data. But now that we've put a media component to this, I'm going to have to do an add-on for the media ID. I should just be able to use the add-on I created in prior videos for media, because this is specific to our to-do. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I want to confirm that I'm actually getting back the image information. Let's go ahead and put 10 and run that. OK, so if I look at the URL very specifically, I see that I'm getting back the whole URL. And so at this point, we fixed the Xano side of it. That's pretty straightforward. We added the add-on that we'd used prior, so there's some great reuse there. And now if I run this test again, there. So I've got all my data back. I want to set the schema from the response. We'll go ahead and save. And now I should be able to go back into my screen for the image. Go to the Properties tab, and instead of having the default here, I am going to set this up the same way we did in the last video for the screen or the list. I am going to do a formula. We don't want any of that. And if you remember, the formula was an if that had an is nully inside of that, which then had an app variable which we still have. And then what I need to do is add in the uh, data variable for the to-do detail. And there it is. So that path. So I'm a big fan. AppGyver makes getting access to all of this without having to remember the exact names of things. Makes it very easy because now I have an is nully that I want to check on this path. So I'm going to just highlight it and copy it. OK. So what we have here is if we click on the is nully, we have the same definition we're used to. If it's undefined or null, and if that's the data to do detail media image path that is null, actually, I don't want path. I want URL. Um, and there's a reason for that, because we have learned let me change this real quick because I'm halfway into sentences. Data variable, there it is. The path does not have the base part of the Xano URL. 
The URL is what Xano added in so that we could get the full path. And I want that because we also want to do that for this. Because if I use path and I don't have the base URL on it, then I will get no image and it'll look broken. So maybe this is a good example of me actually catching a broken for a change uh, before I test. So once again, is nully. So if I do not have a defined or valued point for this, I'm gonna use the default image. And if I do have it, I'm gonna use that URL in the image. Now the only thing I don't know of what's gonna happen here is how is the image component gonna show up since this is a one pixel image? It may fill in a full size or we may have to change some styling. Um, okay. Yeah, that may look really big, but we'll see in the real world over here. We are going to look at wash the dog. Okay, it's kind of big, but I'm gonna take a look at styling and if it's nothing obvious, I'm just gonna go with that. But so what we have now as I go in and out is, you know, if we had something other than colors and hopefully um, you guys have added something in more interesting than colors, those images would obviously show up here. The real test is if I go to another new to do down lower, great, it shows the gray image because these are items that have no image and they still show up as the default image. So at this point, we have a valid um, image coming into the to do details screen because what we want to do next is we want to add a tap for the image that will bring up the camera uh, and then go through the upload process of that image because we want you to be able to change the image while you're in here. So let's go ahead and find take photo. If this is not in your list, you can always go into the marketplace and search on camera and you'll be able to add this take photo. I'm going to go ahead and based on tapping on the image, I am going to go into the take photo, which will, um, if we go look at our outputs, um, we get the photo file path is what we're going to be interested in. And so I, let's see, I wonder if we can just make this really simple and go to the installed. Warned you that I was going to be thinking through this as we went. And I think there's going to be a compress in here somewhere. Pick image, pick date, return. And let's go to the base 64. So we're going to come down here and get back on track here instead of me just babbling about stuff. We're going to take the photo. Since most cameras these days take really big pictures, we're going to come in here and we'll leave the image quality high, but I'm going to change the maximum height let's say it's 350 and the maximum width 350 and see what that looks like. That should get us down to a size that's pretty nice. And I wanna go in, you can see they have the little um, icon here that tells me I'm missing a required field. So we're gonna go into source image path, output value of another node, and we're gonna pick up the path for the photo. Okay, so we take a photo, the file path for that photo comes into the resize compress image, and then on success of compress, okay, so we compress, and then we convert the source file to base 64, which will be coming out of the resize compress flow file, and we want that path, and we'll save it. Okay, so now I have a base 64 image to work with. And so now what I want to do is I want to set up a data variable because I need to call my um, to do primary. So let's come to data variables. The to do detail we leave alone. That's what populated our screen initially. 
but I want to call the upload to do primary. Go ahead. And this is going to be a new data record, not a collection or a single data item. And then what we're going to want to do is come back to our image. And since it doesn't have size in here, it's hard to pick out here, but I can page. I mean, here we go. I can come over to my tree layout as I look at where I'm clicking and I can get my image again. So if you ever put an image here and don't have an image in it and it disappears on you, it's still over in your page layout, easy to get to. Okay, so I've added my data variable that I need for the upload primary. I'm gonna come back over to the logic, the core tab, and I am going to create a record. And we're gonna take, after we've converted to the base 64, I'm gonna connect it to the create record. And it's not a to-do. We wanna come in and change the data resource, which is upload to-do primary. We have an authorization token we always use from the app variables, which we will also use. We have a to-do ID, which is going to be off of our, I believe that parameter was passed in. So let's take a look at our page parameters. It says it's incompatible. We're kind of used to that. What I want to do is go into the formula and pick page parameters, the to-do ID. There it is. We'll save that. So now we've got our auth token. We've got our to-do ID, and now I believe the only thing in our properties here is the image content, and we are gonna wanna pick that up from output of another node, and it is gonna be the convert to base 64 text. Okay, and so for our benefit, we are going to add in a couple of toast flow logic components because I want to know if this worked and I want to know if it did not work. And so if it did work, we'll just type success. And if it did not work, we'll do failed. We will uh, obviously We'll probably, actually, we may leave both of these, um, but we may remove them as well if the UI doesn't look real clean with them. I guess if there's a potential that I'm going to keep them, why not come into our toast position and go back to our app variable for toast position for both of these. So this, as you remember, will get it to show up in the middle of the screen instead of at the bottom of the screen. Seems to be a little easier to notice it when it's right in front of you as opposed to at the bottom. So we'll pick that one again for the second one we have. Okay, hmm. let us see what happens. So all of this has been refreshed. I am gonna go to wash the dog. I am gonna tap on that. Um, we get camera. So why don't we just take a picture of the screen? And it failed. See? That feels more normal for me. Okay, so we need to figure out what we're missing. So let's come all the way over to Xano and go look at our database because I'm curious at what level it may have failed. We come down to the bottom. It looks like we have no image that has been uploaded. So we know that that image is not getting back. So we are going to, that would be about the only thing there, because if the image didn't make it, then our API would not have done much, because I'm going to switch back here. Our API is the upload to do primary with an ID, and we have seen this work, but 
I guess since it's failing at the moment, I should probably rerun it. Do that real quick. Our auth token in. Let's come out to the Shunia site. Grab an image to work with. And then let's go ahead and just put in our number 10. Okay. So we know the API is working. We got a good return with that. If I refresh the screen. Okay. So we're getting our information in here. API is good. So let's come back here and see what I messed up here. I have component tap. We did see the photo. Um, so I guess I need to put in some additional checks. Even though, um, in theory, all of these were successful because I got all the way to the create record. So even though I don't have um, debug messages coming off of the failures. Um, it, it would have failed without showing me failure if it didn't get all the way through. So I took a photo. We may even switch this from take photo to pick an image just to see if there is something wrong with what I'm doing with the photo. I resized and compressed from the photo file path. And I then resize. Let's take a look. Yeah, so resize and compress image. And I selected the file path. So that means the convert file to base64 is working off the resize file path. And then on the create record, I should be pulling from the convert file to base64 which would be in the custom object. And that is text, actually. It's not a file path. So I'm converting file to base64. And base64 text is all that comes out of that. So base64 text is being fed into the custom object. Before I call create record, I'm going to do an alert. Coming off of the base 64, and I am going to start showing each one of the data elements to make sure that we have all of those. Because obviously one of those is missing, so let's go ahead and go to the data variable, page parameters, and we'll pick up the to-do ID to make sure that we have that. This should reset. We we'll use the same one. We will take a picture. Okay, take a picture. Okay, so we have ID one. That's valid. Actually, that's interesting. I didn't get a fail that time. But it also didn't change the image. Let me just make sure. Okay, good. I didn't want it to work this time and fail last time when we hadn't really changed anything. Okay, so the debug showed the one. So let's also show the convert file to base64. That may be a whole lot of text. So maybe before I show that one, what I will do is show the auth token, make sure that that has a value. Switch back over here so you can see what I'm doing. Capture. Okay, so we have a bearer token. That's good. And so we check the auth token. We check the params to do ID. Now we're going to check the. Uh, a 64 image. So we are going to want to pick what comes out of another node. It will be convert text. 
So if this does show successfully, it's going to be a whole bunch of a whole bunch of cryptic tests with text. Okay. Oh, I might know what our problem is. If you look at the top of this image, um, I have not attached the data header to it for the data image. And if I, I think if I don't do that, I have a problem. Wow, that was a long way around for you guys to get to see me find out that solution. Probably shouldn't get too excited yet because um, I haven't fixed it. So let's go pick this up here. Let's uh, come out to our Shunia site. Let's see here. And I'm going to probably seen me do this in prior videos. Sometimes I just use my editor here or my web address screen as a quick little editor. And I'm only doing this so that I can pick up the header really quickly without opening up another editor. And I don't remember if I have an app variable for that. I do not. And I want one because obviously I'm going to do it more than once. So this is um, base 64 image header. It is text and it will be the value I just took from the Shunia website. Okay, so we are now going to concatenate that onto our image when we do our create record. So instead of this just being uh, directly in there, we want to change the binding type to a formula. And I want to, no, I don't want to do that, silly me. I want to come to my app variables and pick the base image header. And I want to concatenate that to what is interesting, our content object. I don't know about this format here. Give me a moment to just look at this. I'm saying, yeah, I don't want to do it that way. I, don't, I was going to screw up the JSON structure of that body. And I think what I want to do instead is be within this because I want this header to be attached to this variable and all of that wrapped in the content JSON structure here. And so we're going to leave our alert here and see if we get a little bit better outcome with our alert. And I won't because of how I did the debugging. Um, give me a moment on that. I wonder if we were able to load that image out here. Hey, looky there. Okay, we have success. So what we saw was um, the debug message didn't show the header. And that's very simply because in the debug message, I, I didn't put the header. I was just pulling straight out of base 64. So I'm going to get rid of the debug. I'm going to leave the create record. Um, after I successfully create the record, I'm going to get rid of these toasts. And what I want to do is set this image source to be um, data that's coming out of the create record. So I want to, I need to have an app variable associated with this. So give me a quick sec on that. So we're gonna need to set this source to what comes back from our create record. And we get the URL back in our create record and we'll confirm that. And so what we're going to want to set it to is to the data variable for the to do detail media image URL. So even though this is a data source that gets populated with an API call, we can still set that internal to AppGyver 
And that way, if we do have an image, it'll show up. And if we don't, we'll get the default image like we have. So let's go ahead and set the data variable coming off of the create record. Uh, data variable name is to do detail. And I just want to set the single one. This may be a merge that I want to do because I might, I, yeah, hopefully. Here's my concern, I'm babbling. My concern is that if I don't set the others, I might blank them out. But um, let's just go with that. So I learned something new. I had to go offline there for a while and pause. I'm going to go ahead and delete the set data variable because I kept looking for the URL for the image. And I struggled to find it. And let's see. Because uh, what I was trying to do is set a data variable. And I wanted to set the to do detail because that's what this image gets set to but I very specifically wanted to do it for the media, right? And I expected to see the URL somewhere in this list, but if I had paid attention to hovering here, it says type object with three properties. So if I click on that, then I can pick object with properties, and I've actually now gone into the media where I can see all of the details of what's passed with media. And obviously one of those details is URL. So then I wanna pick URL. So we're getting a few deep into this data and I want to populate that URL with output value of another node, which is going to be the uh, create return from the create record. And then I'm gonna scroll and find my URL, not path, but URL. And so now I have set the URL within media to be, it's got a few saves because it's for every level. There we go. So you got to dig a little bit deep on that one to find it. I mean, it still gets you there, but I uh, hadn't really gone down that path before. So at this point, take a picture, resize and compress convert the file to base64, feed it into the create record, and then reset the variable. I am going to, because I got to thinking about this, let's go with our image quality, and let's go all the way down to 25%. And then let's just uh, empty these out to, yeah, good, and save it. So we're gonna go with a different scheme on how to make it a smaller image and we'll see what that looks like. And you'll see as I switch over here as I was doing some testing while I had paused, my 350 by 350 left some funny shaped like Wash the Dog images. We'll go clean those up later, but let's see what Mow the Yard looks like. If I take another screenshot here. There it is. Okay, so I still got some cleaning up to do on the image size. But now at least we have the image showing up. If I go back to the to-do list on Mow the Yard, there it is. So we're now changing the images. And if we come all the way back here and prove, we have current images showing up. And obviously if we go into the to-do, we will see that they are getting images. And so let's look at it from this perspective. Um, let's go find another new to-do in our list. And that's another new to-do is number 11 and it has no media ID. So another new to-do, I'm gonna go in, take a little bit different picture so it looks different. It did a 50% on it and it loaded it in. Let me set that down and then if we come back here, number 11 and refresh, there we go. So at this point we have the ability to add in any to-do image that we want. 
The only thing I'll probably do next time is like I tend to do after putting in new features, I'll go back and clean this up. So maybe it's 100% width and a more of a landscape view potentially, I don't know. We'll figure out something that looks good. So um, got through quite a bit on that one, even though it doesn't feel like we did that much, it feels like we accomplished what we were shooting for, which is um, the ability to add images from the mobile app through the API back to Xano, display them in the list, and then come back in and change them if we so choose. And so you've got the ability now to take a picture of dishes, mowers, floors to sweep, whatever it is you might have. Thanks for hanging in there with me, and I'll see you at the next video.